In one of the lockdown files and the leaked WhatsApp messages, we discovered a bit of a weird and cringy joke by Matt Hancock about his relationship with Bill Gates. We keep finding out more stuff uh, when it comes to these uh, leaked WhatsApp messages every single day. Some of it is very important. Some of it is just ridiculous and uh, it's just cringy. Uh, one of them is about this. Uh, Matt Hancock, um, in a WhatsApp conversation with his advisors, was talking about Bill Gates. Now, when the mainstream media, well, the, the, the press, the Telegraph, released this and talked about it, it wasn't really that important. It, they didn't really sh mention it as some sort of a kind of conspiracy theory, but it was more lighthearted, like how he joked about Bill Gates. But when you look at it properly, you can come up with a number of questions about this relationship. Now, we know that Hancock and Bill Gates do have a relationship and they like each other, they hang out, they have conversations and they have helped each other in the past. And this is the problem I have. It's the fundamental issue when it comes to having direct access to the top of the power. Just because you are rich, you can have access to power. And that's the problem. And there's still so many people in the mainstream who just don't really take it seriously. They say, well, as long as we have no evidence that anything dodgy is happening, it's okay. Bill Gates is just, you know, is a rich man. He's a philanthropist. He has all these charity causes that he cares about. He suddenly became an expert in public health. So why not allow him to talk to prime ministers or health secretaries? Well, there's an issue because it's a fundamental flaw in the system, the Western system, where if you're a CEO of Sainsbury's or Tesco, you could easily have direct access and have conversations with government ministers and you could lobby on behalf of your so-called industry. But in reality, anything that politicians would do for Sainsbury's or Tesco, they're not going to be helping the whole of the supermarket industry, the food industry, for example. It's going to be helping the big businesses, the big supermarkets. So a random small corner shop or an off-license in a small town, or, or, or all of them as a collective in the country, they have no say. They can't go knock on the door of the prime minister and say, hello, on behalf of the small businesses of small corner shops, can you do this? No. And that's why it's a fundamental problem with having even a relationship, close relationship between Hancock and Bill Gates. Anyway, let's get into it because there was a moment where he joked about, let's get Bill Gates to do something for us. And Matt Hancock said he owes me one. And he was joking. It was it was a jokey comment, but it was basically some sort of like a name dropping, bragging sort of thing, humble brag. Let's go into the WhatsApp messages. 25th of January, 2021. Okay, so this conversation uh, was between uh, Damon Paul, who is the media special advisor to Matt Hancock and the health secretary. Uh, Damon said, have you spoken with Tedros, the head of the World Health Organization, about NVAP, which was uh, the new variant assessment platform? Um, Hancock said, yes, I've messaged Tedros. And uh, then Paul said, no promises, but I'm trying to land a Bill Gates endorsement of the platform. Ooh, celebrity endorsement. I'm so proud of you guys. You got access. Emma Hancock said, haha, tell him that considering how many people I'm getting his chips injected into, he owes me one. Ha ha. So, <laughs> firstly, it, it, it's, it's, it's not funny. I'm, I'm laughing because it's just ridiculous. Uh, they think this is some sort of inside joke. And uh, that's, you know, he was saying, well, yeah, tell Bill Gates. And we're so, such buddies that we could joke about how Bill Gates is injecting people with 5G chips or whatever, microchips. <laughs> But the whole problem is that why this relationship between, essentially, I'm going to call them rich celebrities with no expertise and government is so normalized that it's it's not the same as, you know, in the past when you, you want to at some times, times, at times you have policy on sport or health and you randomly get in touch with some sort of athlete and you, you don't even know that person, but, you know, you get them to... Um, do some sort of video um, uh, endorsement or campaign for that policy. That's different. And even that, I'm not really in favor of, but I, I get the concept. But the relationship between people like Bill Gates and government is very different. I'm not really going to go tinfoil hat and say, I know for sure what sort of conversations they have behind closed doors because I don't have the evidence. 
but even on the surface, I'm still criticizing it. Why should that be so easily normalized that Hancock uh, could just get in touch with Bill Gates and not? it's not just endorsement. They actually got this guy to give him advice. He's done, it, it, this is public. He said it, he's bragged about it, and government's bragged. We literally did a video a couple of weeks ago of uh, Grant Shabs, who's now in charge of the energy stuff, uh, going out there to meet with um, Bill Gates at an event, and did a video, selfie video, again bragging, like name dropping. Hey, I'm here with my good friend Bill Gates to talk about net zero and energy security, oxymoron. And that's supposed to be normal. It's not just you know using Bill Gates as a as a face of an in, in endorsement or like some sort of campaign, even though that's kind of cringy already. The guy has access that he could send a message to prime ministers and give some sort of advice and said, "I I read a book, guys. I read a book on this issue, and you should listen to me because I'm a rich guy, and I'm a bored philanthropist. I've got nothing else to do, so I've got ideas. Listen to me. That that shouldn't be normalized." So this story that came out, and when the Telegraph and others have been talking about it, they simply talk about, ah, oh, it's just a funny joke. Yeah, of course, it was a cringy joke. But that's not my main issue. It's a reminder of how close these people are. And it's just not healthy. Anyway, let me know what you think. Uh, we're going to come back in half an hour. I'm Maya Tusi, and we are the media.